Ink Ribbon. I wasn't planning on it, but after so many of you requested it, I decided we had to take a closer look at Mr. Winters and see if we could dig up some information on the most obscured character in the Resident Evil franchise. And I mean that literally, you can't see his face. But we will get to that, don't worry. From losing fingers to family dinners, here are 25 facts about Ethan Winters. Ethan Winters is 37 years old, and his height is 5'11", or 180 centimeters. Ethan was originally living and working as a systems engineer in Los Angeles before he met Mia. Ethan is infected with the mold and joins characters like Sherry and Wesker who have regenerative abilities, although his seems to be the most extreme case. While every instance of Ethan's legs or hands being severed results in him reattaching them, apparently subjects infected with mold are able to regrow limbs completely in a matter of minutes. At the start of Resident Evil 7, Mia attacks Ethan with a knife, cutting up his hands and arms, then impaling his hand with a screwdriver, before finally severing his hand with a chainsaw. All of this was done while Ethan was still 100% human and had no regenerative abilities. This is why instead of attempting to reattach his hand, he just squeezes his wrist to prevent blood loss. During the infamous dinner scene in Seven, the Bakers are attempting to heal Ethan in their own way. By force feeding him food contaminated with the mold, they are attempting to speed up his healing process so he can return to full health and join them. Throughout Resident Evil 7, Ethan sees both the old lady and the little girl, both of which are Evelyn. The reason for this is because she possesses hallucinatory powers, causing Ethan to see her a certain way, as well as the rest of the Baker family. But in reality, her physical form is indeed the old lady, decaying and damaged from all the experiments done on her. Even though Ethan is constantly losing appendages and reattaching them or regenerating them, for some reason when he loses his fingers at the beginning of Village, they never regenerate, leaving him missing his left pinky and ring finger for the remainder of the game. In the epilogue cutscene of Village, a person is seen walking along the side of the road near the end. Using a camera hack, some players were able to zoom in and see that it's actually Ethan. It's still unclear what the significance of this is, assuming there is any at all. The main handgun Ethan uses in Village is called the Lemmy and is based on the real gun called the CZ-2075 Rammy, or Rammy for short. Also worth mentioning, if he reloads his clip while it still has ammo, he will hold on to it, but if the clip is empty, he will simply drop it. Developers have confirmed that Ethan was not the character in the beginning hour demo, even though Ethan's voice actor is credited as the protagonist. There is still a lot of fan speculation as to why Capcom went so far out of their way to hide Ethan's face. Most agree that it's really to put the player in his shoes and experience his story firsthand, but a lot of people feel it felt very forced and even distracting in Village. They even go so far as to cover all the mirrors in Ethan and Mia's house. While Ethan's face is usually hidden, he does have a face, and his face is modeled after Yaya Chomki. In the Trauma Pack DLC, there is artwork showing that Ada Wong was originally going to be in the game and would have helped Ethan escape at some point. In Resident Evil 7, Ethan has the option to save Mia or save Zoe. If he chooses Zoe, he has to kill Mia, making it officially the bad and non-canon ending. This is also confirmed in the End of Zoe DLC. Both Ethan and Wesker are the only main male characters who are naturally blonde in Resident Evil, and both of them were killed off. After the events of Seven, Mia and Ethan were put into custody by the BSAA and had large clumps of mold removed from their bodies. In exchange for Mia's cooperation, they were put into witness protection and had to stay out of contact from the outside world, barely even having internet access. It was during this time that Mia became pregnant and the events leading up to Village unfolded. Ethan shares a lot of similarities with James Sunderland from Silent Hill 2. Both are blonde, stoic men that come to a creepy place in search of their wife who had presumably died three years ago. Both are also very capable with weapons and defending themselves in desperate situations. This is almost likely just a coincidence, but I thought it was worth noting. One of the most unique aspects about Ethan and Mia is the fact that they are married, since romantic relationships are not prominent in Resident Evil. 
The only other main protagonist in the series who is known to be married is Barry Burton. At the beginning of Village, Ethan loses a ring finger and pinky. I wondered how much this would affect the use of your hand, so I looked it up and apparently losing your pinky is bad because it's surprisingly one of your most important fingers when it comes to grip, providing almost half of your hand's grip strength. And in case you were wondering, on the off chance you have to choose which finger to lose, according to what I found online, the best options are your index finger or ring finger, as these have the least impact on grip strength and overall use of your hand. Unlike Mia or the Bakers, Ethan seems to have a unique ability to resist Evelyn's mind control. While this can be seen as a plot hole, it actually is briefly touched on in the files that you find towards the end of Resident Evil 7, where it's explained that there are different stages of infection and until the mold reaches the brain, hallucination and mind control is not yet possible. In Ethan's office and storage room, you can find two books that are references to the franchise. One is a book about architecture, written by George Trevor, and the other is a manual about guns, written by Joseph Kendo, Robert Kendo's brother. Throughout Village, the Duke goes out of his way to help Ethan and guide him on his journey, but it's never explained as to why. The most probable answer is simply that the Duke is a businessman and Ethan helps him turn a profit, but it also seems like there's more to his motives given how much he knows. Mia is revealed to have been Miranda, which raises questions that are never answered, like how long was Miranda posing as Mia? Ethan does mention Mia's anger issues in his diary, which implies something was off, but Ethan should have noticed the drastic change since she is his partner, unless of course Miranda is able to access Mia's memories as well. There also seems to have been many opportunities for Miranda to simply take Rose and leave in the middle of the night, but the game probably would have been a lot less engaging if it was done that way. Right before Ethan fully calcifies, he wraps Rose in his bloody jacket and hands her off to Chris to return to Mia. In the epilogue cutscene, Rosemary is seen wearing Ethan's jacket after visiting his grave, giving insight to her strong bond with him. While Ethan had an entire campaign in Seven, he was actually dead through the majority of that game, at least technically speaking. When you first encounter Jack and he stomps on Ethan's head, he causes severe brain damage to Ethan, essentially killing him until the dinner scene where he is resuscitated by the bakers using the mold. So when Jack says, welcome to the family, this is what he's really talking about. And that is it for this list. If there's anything that I missed, please leave it down in the comments, and also let me know what other video game characters you'd like to see in this series. Not just from Resident Evil, but from any game. If you learned something new, then please use whatever remaining fingers you have to hit that like button. Don't forget to check out my other videos with facts just like these on many other characters in gaming. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.